In this video, you will learn how to calculate the present value of money, PV. You will learn the present value equation, solving problems using a scientific calculator, as well as solving problems using a financial calculator. So let's get started with the present value equation. You might have seen this in your book, PV equals FV, 1 divided by 1 plus i to the power of n. Let me explain it. PV is the present value of money. FV is the future value of money, I, or sometimes it's R, is the interest rate, and N is the number of time periods. Now we will put this equation in practice. So let's look at this example. It says, suppose you want to buy a new laptop next year, and the one you have in mind should be selling for $1,000 a year from now. How much you need to put away today at 5% to have $1,000 a year from now? So, according to this example, you want to put away a certain amount of money in an account that pays you 5% for a year to reach your target of 1000. The question is, how much should you put away today? So here are the given values. The future value is 1000, the interest rate is 5%, n is 1, and we are trying to solve for the present value. So we will use the present value equation, like so, and then plug in the numbers. You might want to enter all the numbers at once in your calculator, or you might want to break them down in two parts and, and enter them. In any case, you will get the answer, which is $952.38. This is the present value of your $1,000. Now let's try to solve another example. It says, your retirement goal is $2 million. The bank is offering you a certificate of deposit that is good for 40 years at 6%. What initial deposit do you need to make today to reach your $2 million goal at the end of 40 years? Again, this is a very straightforward example. You might want to pose it, try to solve it, and then come back and check your answer. So here we have your goal, which is 2 millions. This is the future value. And then for how long is your deposit? It's for 40 years. So this is the number of time periods. The bank will be paying you 6%. This is i, and we are trying to solve for the present value. We will use the present value equation, like so, and simply plug in the numbers. And you will get the answer, which will be 194,444.38. And this is the present value, the amount you should start investing today. Now, using the same equation, the missing variable is not necessarily the present value. You can use the same equation to solve for the interest rate, the number of time periods, and the future value. So let's look at exercises that look like that. It says here, John is a college student who, need, who needs to borrow $5,000 today for his tuition bill. He agrees to pay back the loan in a lump sum payment after he is out of college five years from now. The bank states that the payment will need to be $7,012.76. If John borrows the 5000 from the bank, what interest rate is he paying on his loan? So let's start by categorizing the given values. We have the amount that he is borrowing today, which is the 5000 That must be our present value. And then when is he going to pay back the amount? It's within five years. So this is the number of time periods. How much is he going to pay the bank? He's going to pay $7,012.76. So... What is the interest rate? This is what we're trying to find. We will use the present value equation, plug in the numbers. But here, I think we can simplify the equation. What we can do is move the numbers to one side and keep the missing variables on the other side. So we will move the 7012.76 to the left side of the equation. To do so, I need to divide it because it was initially multiplied by 1 over 1 plus i to the power of 5. I will get the answer from the division, which will be 0 0.71299, but now I'm still left with 1 over 1 plus i to the power of 5. How can I further simplify this equation, knowing that I have a fraction on the right side? So what I can do is, Give the 0 0.71299 a default denominator. A default denominator to any number is 1. 
So I will keep a denominator and then I can easily cross multiply both sides of this equation. So I will multiply 0 0.71299 by 1 plus i to the power of 5, which will be the left side of my equation. And then I will multiply 1 by 1 and it will be the right side of my equation. Now I will need to further simplify this equation simply by moving the numbers on one side and keeping the variable on the other side. So I will move the 0 0.71299 to the right side of the equation using the opposite sign. As you know, 0 0.71299 is multiplied by 1 plus i to the power of 5. So when I move it to the right, I will use a division sign. And it will look like so. I will get the answer, which is 1.4025 on the right side. And then on the left, I'm still left with 1 plus i to the power of 5. How do I further simplify it? Is by eliminating the exponent, which is 5. How do I do so? By using the root to the degree of 5 on both sides of the equation. On the left, I will be left with 1 plus i. And on the right, I will enter it in my calculator and I will get 1.06999. I will still need to further simplify this by simply moving the 1 to the right side of the equation. But you got to be careful here because there is a plus sign between the i and the 1. So when I move it to the right, I will need to use the opposite sign, which is a minus. So it will look like so. Once I get the result, this is the value of i, which is 0 0.0699. Since it is a, a, an interest rate, I can multiply it by 100 and get 6.99%, or roughly a 7%. Now let's look at another example. It says, your goal in life is to become a millionaire. Today your financial portfolio is worth $3,733.24. Being a shrewd investor, you are determined that you can earn 15% every year on your portfolio. How long will you have to wait to become a millionaire if this investment represents all your wealth? So let's look at the given values. You want to become a millionaire in the future. So the future value is $1 million. And then how much do you have today or how much are you investing today is the present value, which is $3,733.24. What is the interest rate? It is 15%. But how long would it take you? And this is the number of time periods that we want to find out. Let's use the present value equation and then plug in the numbers. You can simply see that we have the numbers and the missing variables mixed together. So let's move the 1 million from the right side of the equation to the left side of the equation. To do so, I will divide it. Because it's initially multiplied by 1 over 1 plus 0.15 to the power of n. So I will do so, and then I will get the answer for the left side of the equation, which will be 0 0.00373. And on the right side, I'm still left with 1 over 1 plus 0.15 to the power of n. Now, since I have a fraction on the right side and a regular number on the left side, I will give my number a default denominator, which is 1. Once I give it the denominator, I can cross multiply both sides of the equation. So I will multiply 0 0.00373 by 1 plus 0 0.15 to the power of n. And I will multiply 1 by 1. And it will look like so. And then I will try to make it even simpler by moving the 0 0.00373 to the right side of the equation. And I will do so by dividing it since it is initially multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.15 to the power of n. And now I will get the result and I'm still left with 1 plus 0 0.15 to the power of n in the left side of the equation and 2, 268.0965 on the right side of the equation. So how do I further simplify this equation? On the left side, I have an unknown exponent, which is n. 
It is difficult to move around the equation when the exponent is unknown. What I can do, however, is to lower the exponent. How can I do so is by using the natural log. The natural log is the ln key in your calculator. So let's simplify this equation by using the natural log. And I will tell you step by step how to enter it in your calculator. In your calculator, press ln and then 1 plus 0 0.15 and get the answer and write it down. And then again, press ln and write and enter 268.0965 and get the answer. So on the left side, you will have 0 0.1398 and don't forget to write n on the same line next to it. And then on the right side, you will be left with 5.591. Now it is very simple to simplify this uh, equation. I will need to move the 0 0.1398 to the right side of the equation and that's by dividing it. It will look like so. Once I get the, the result, it is the value of n, which is 39.99. I can round it to 40 and the answer is 40 years. Now we have reached the second part of this video where I will show you how to solve the same problems but this time using the financial calculator. Let me get started by showing you a picture of my calculator and the keys we will be using. So we will use the CMPD key, which is the compound button. Once you press it, you will get a list and I will explain this list later. And then the EXE button. This is the execute button. You press it to move between items on the list. And then the solve button. You press it once you move next to the missing component, but only after entering all the given numbers. So let's get started. This is the same as the exercise we solved earlier. We have the given values, F FV or the future value is 2 million, N, the number of time periods is 40, I is 6% and we are trying to solve for the present value. Press compound and make sure you delete all the values already entered in your calculator using the delete button. And now let's carry on. Where you find n, enter 40 because that's a 40 years and then press execute to move to the next. And then you will find i, so you will enter 6 and not 6% or 0 0.06, only 6 because the calculator is already by default counting this as an interest rate. Then press execute. Then move to the PV, skip it for now. Then you will find PMT or payment. We will not use it for this kind of activity, so skip it. Then you will reach the FV, enter the 2 million, and then execute. And then using the arrow, go back all the way to PV and press solve. The calculator will give you minus 194,444.375. This is the present value, but when you write it in your paper or uh, for school or for work, you should write it as a positive number. The calculator will give you a negative number just to distinguish between the present value and the future value. I have one last activity for you, again using the financial calculator. You might want to look at this example, pose it, try to do it on your own, and then come back to check if you got it right. So here are the given values, FV is 1 million, N is unknown, I is 15%, and PV is 3,733.24. Again, press compound, make sure you delete all the numbers you already plugged from earlier. And then again, go to N, skip it for now because this is the unknown. Move to I and enter it as 15. Press execute, and then move to PV. Make sure you enter the value in minus, so you will enter minus 3,733.24 and then press execute. Then you will move to payment, ignore it for now because this is not part of our activity. And then you will reach FV, enter it as 1 million and then press execute. 
then use the arrow to go back all the way to N and press solve and it will give you the answer at 40, which is 40 years. Now we reach the end of this video. I thank you for watching it and now I'm sure you have the confidence to solve any problem related to the present value. If you have any questions, however, you can leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and bye.